All right, welcome back to the channel, guys. Um, I have been wanting to jump on here for a couple of days now. Um, there's been some things I've been wanting to get out, but I just have been slammed with things. Yesterday, I had a doctor's appointment, all kinds of stuff coming up. You know how it goes. So I'm on today. Uh, want to show you guys a few things in the charts. One thing that I, I wanted to mention in my last videos is how volatile this week could be. Um, you know, today we've got the elections, obviously, um, which, which could move the price up, down, um, pretty good. So there could be some vol volatility, uh, with the election, obviously. Um, I, I hate the politics of, of the whole thing. I don't really like either candidate that we've got uh, for us, but I think the general consensus in the crypto space is that Trump is probably better for crypto. Now, I don't know, guys. I don't really think crypto and Bitcoin really need politicians. I think it's kind of the other way around that politicians really need crypto and and we've kind of seen that we've kind of seen that pivot um you know several months ago when politicians really started talking about it and i think it's just a voting base that they really can't afford to upset or you know underestimate in my opinion and i do think that's true um but yeah, we've seen Kamala just kind of drag her feet. You know, she's said some some good things, but she hasn't really committed as as hard and as much as a lot of people really want her to. Uh, Trump, on the other hand, you know, has come out and really said some really good, nice things in glaring contrast to what he said about Bitcoin when he was president. Uh, but he also said, you know, we're going to be nice to the crypto people until at least until the election. Direct quote from him at Bitcoin conference. So uh, can you trust Trump? I don't know, but it's generally looked on that he might be more favorable to the industry. Uh, just it, it, even just for the mere fact that he is participating like he just launched his, uh, you know, helped launch his kids, his son's coin world, uh, Liberty something or other, some DeFi coin. Um, so he's he's participating in that. He's done his own N NFTs. So generally, I think it it it's kind of commonly uh, thought of that he's probably the more friendly of the two. Um, now whether that's true or not, I, you know, again, guys, I don't, I don't know. I don't really care. Uh, I think they're both horrible and they're both going to do pretty horrible things. And in the end, guys, neither of them have a plan to balance the budget, which really plays into Bitcoin because we're going to have higher inflation. We're going to see that higher national debt. Uh, we don't have a debt ceiling. And so, at least right now, and government overspending is just going to continue and continue. You know, we're pushing $36 trillion national debt right now, um, all of which, like 90% of which has been added over the last four presidencies. So none of them have, <laughs> have any desire or any plan to balance that budget, which is only good for assets and very good for Bitcoin. Um, so honestly, you know, you, you, you guys go out and if you're going to vote, vote for whoever you want, not at all an interest of mine. Uh, but you know, it, it can, and it probably will move the price, especially, you know, volatility short term. Now, even though a Trump victory is kind of seen by the industry as a positive thing, there are some people that say, are saying that we've, this last move up has been the crypto industry kind of, uh, pricing in that victory. 
And so even if Trump does win, we could have a sell the news event and and go short term, go down. Now, we could do the opposite, you know, right? We could do, uh, you know, nobody knows is basically what I'm saying. The outcome of the election. Who knows what's going to happen price wise due to that? But I, you know, I would really imagine that we do see some volatility today tomorrow. Uh, Another thing is whether the election is contested, you know, if it's really close and, and the, 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 uh, loser, (laughs) they're both losers, but, uh, if the loser of the election, um, you know, contests the election, like we saw last time, like we've seen several times, you know, uh, you know, the Bush Gore election was contested by Gore um, because of the whole hanging Chad thing. And, you know, it was it was well drawn out for for several months, guys. And if we have something like that this time, I really do not look forward to that. Hopefully it's a it's it's a, a, a victory that's conceded, you know, by the by the loser. So um that's really probably the best outcome either way. So let's hope for that. Uh, otherwise, guys, I do want to show you some things in the charts. Um, however, before we do that, guys, it is a new month, which means we've got a new animal sanctuary that we're really uh, spotlighting and trying to get some help for. If you guys have a few bucks, this is Rory. Rory Pond Rescue Ranch. Sorry, you guys cannot see that over in the corner. So yeah, Rory right here. um, Rory Pond Rescue Ranch. Uh, This is kind of their animals page, but they have just they just have a ton of animals, guys, a bunch of rescued farm and pet animals. Um, You know, they've got Yuki, the dog, a bunch of goats, pigs roosters turkeys uh they do have some cows i believe uh they they do have a cow on their facebook page so it's i'm sure their cows are down here somewhere um but guys i i will leave a link to their home page this is is their meet the animals page but i will leave a link to this page, uh, their homepage, where you can go over. If you go over to the top where it says uh, more, and you, again, you guys cannot see this. I need to be more mindful of where my pages are. Um, So zoom out here. If you go over here to more and hit shop to support, uh, you can see they've got an Amazon wish list, a bonfire where you can buy some T-shirts, hoodies, whatever, with with their animals on it, some of their art. Um, they've got a Printify where you can get stickers or a uh, calendar, um, and then they've got PayPal and Venmo. So if you guys can spare a few dollars, or if you want to grab a shirt, want to help them out on Amazon head over. I will leave a link directly to this page as well in the description of the video. So go down, go over to their place and uh, help them out, guys. They're doing some. Oh, they've got a cow right here. So, yeah, they do have uh, cows. Oh, um, and their cow on their bonfire. Anyways, guys, yeah, go over there, show them some love. Please help these animals out. Always appreciate it on my end. Now I'm going to jump over to uh, one more thing that we've got going on Uh, this week, uh, two days. So it'll be Thursday. The FOMC meeting uh, will conclude and they'll have their um, announcement on their interest rate decision. So as you can see right here on the FOMC or uh, the CME Fed watch tool, this is basically saying we're almost 100% uh, likely to get a a 25 basis point, uh, 0.25 reduction uh, cut in rates, which would be good. There is a 2.7% chance that the Fed leaves rates unchanged. Uh, If that happens, 
I would expect that we would see a down day or a few days uh, because of that. We should see an interest rate, which should be good for Bitcoin and um, really all investments because uh, a, a rate cut will be an increase in global liquidity. Uh, you know, it'll be cheaper money for people to invest. Um, and, and Bitcoin is the most, uh, there was a study recently put out by Lynn Alden, uh, that Bitcoin is the most correlated to global liquidity. So rate cut is going to send Bitcoin generally higher. So uh, we do have that on Thursday. Guys, there's one other thing that I wanted to show you guys. And that is in the, uh, I'm going to go over to the trade view and look at the charts with you guys. Um, so as you can see right now, we're hanging out right around 70,000. Um, but as you guys are probably all aware, this last week or so has not been great. We've come off that, that local high of about 73,000 or so. And we've just been trending, you know, kind of gone down, down, down since then. Now we've kind of broken out from this. Let me just draw a trend line there. Um, maybe if I can find it. Let's see, here we go. So if we go here, down through those, um, So you can kind of see we've hit here, here, and here. We got really close to hitting that line here, but we have broken through that downward trend. So uh, just in the last few hours or so uh, since this morning. So that is good. Um, but the, the real thing I want to show you guys, and we should have probably expected this as, as I was saying in my last video, you know, I was saying we were kind of dropping off right here when I made that last video. And I was saying, you know, if we hit this green line, which is kind of our all time high from the previous cycle and bounced off that, that would be totally healthy. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't really do that. We fell all the way through to that previous um, downward uh, upper bounds of that downward channel that we were moving in uh, all since, you know, March or whenever. Um, and we did bounce off that pretty well. You guys can see we kind of hit that wicked below just a bit, but we, we bounced off it pretty good. And then we got rejected and came back down. Uh, and we did actually turn that, that upper bound line into support for a little while until... Um, it was about Sunday or so, and we just fell through and, and, um, kind of, we've just been kind of bouncing up and above and below that line ever since then. Uh, so that, that line really isn't holding much support or resistance anymore. Um, so, uh, but the thing is guys, and I, here's what I'm saying is I should have known this. The last, I don't know how many, let's just look how many months we like the beginning of the month has been a down week for the last several months, guys. And, um, strangely it's kind of correlated or it, it coincidentally kind of coincides with the ISM PMI, which is an economic indicator, uh, in the first week of every month. And we, we have, and I don't know why, because nobody talks about that ec economic ind indicator much. So it's not this huge thing, uh, kind of like the fed meeting, the FOMC meeting. A lot of times, you know, the markets will get jittery right before the FOMC meeting. Uh, but nobody re like that's the FOMC meeting is a pretty big meme. A lot of people talk about it. A lot of people watch it, but the ISM, uh, PMI isn't really widely talked about, but the last several months, this downtrend right before the ISM uh, data comes out, we've trended down. Uh, whether that's a coincidence or not, I don't know, but we did just get the ISM PMI reading 
today on election day. So we do have a, the election and that data coming that came out today, and it seems to be good. We've bounced up this morning, and that might be our our down first week of November, you know. But as you can see, I kind of went back and marked all of those first uh, several days in the month with these purple boxes. And I'm just going to jump out to the daily so we can kind of see how far this goes back. Um, so, yeah, we've got we've got November here. We've gone down that first the first few days, October. You guys all remember when I was saying we were going to have October and we we just slammed down to like 58,000. Uh, ended up the, the month up, but um, that first week was pretty brutal. Then going back to September right here, you guys can see we had a pretty big fall those first few days there. Um, going back to August, we had some brutal days right at the 1st of August there. And then July, we had a brutal five or six days at the fir very first of July as well. Now, June, we actually, we actually went up, uh, but how many months is that in a row? One, two, three, four, five months in a row now that the first week of the month has just been rough. So maybe it's possible, guys. I'm not saying one way or the other. The election could really throw price Either way, I don't know what to expect in the short term, uh, but according to this kind of data, we may have seen the bottom for the month. So, um, but that's just really short term, guys. Overall, the next 11, 12 months are just going to be super bullish. Uh, we, we really have a lot more to look forward to. Um, which gets me into this blue line. Um, let's zoom in right here back into the most recent stuff. So this blue line, this blue horizontal line, guys, is the all time high that we hit um, earlier in March, I believe, uh, of this year. Now, once we get above that all time high, guys, we are in blue sky breakout ter territory and that's usually the part of the cycle that gets really really crazy and we're really close guys now i was saying that also when we were clear back here in uh march march 15th or so once we broke above this this previous all-time high this green line i was saying well we're in blue sky territory now Generally, when that happens, we just go parabolic. But guys, it was just too early. We we uh, we broke that previous all time high because of the ETFs, and it was just too early in the cycle. If you are a cycle uh, believer, the one that you know looks at the cycles and really thinks that they repeat, which they have historically so far, every Bitcoin cycle has repeated like clockwork so we did break above early this this cycle uh but we didn't have that parabolic move going into that those blue uh blue sky breakouts right uh so now we are you know eight months later we're at the point in the cycle where that blurb that breakout is really where it happens, where it normally happens in every cycle. So guys, look for look for that uh, coming up in the next several weeks. Once we hit above 737, um, you know, that's that's when things are going to get really interesting. So anyways, guys, that is about it that I have for you today. Um, Look forward to getting on in the next few days or so and uh, talking about what happened with the election, what happened with Bitcoin in in respect to that. Um, and 
maybe maybe we'll get on uh last time the fed the fomc met i was having some diff, uh, technical difficulties couldn't get it to stream for some reason uh but if i if i have the time and if i can get on and stream the fomc meeting uh the press conference where jerome powell gets out and talks about their decision i may be doing that in a couple days so it'll be fun We've got a lot to talk about in the next few few days. Um, so if you guys like this uh, video, make sure to hit the uh, thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, and I will see you guys in a few days. Bye.